So we're here in Tenerife to climb Mount Tidy, which is one of the most famous climbs in cycling. And it's really cool because it starts from the sea and you can climb all the way up to 2,200 meters in one continuous ascent. So there's many different ways you can actually get to the summit. We're choosing one of the most popular routes from Los Cristianos in the south. And this is about 33 kilometers long with an average gradient of around 6% to get to that summit. So the route that we're doing goes along the TF51 road to Arona and then through a hairpin section to Escalona and then you carry along on the same road to Villa Flor and from there you join the TF21 road which is also known as the Wiggins Road because Bradley Wiggins actually did a lot of his training on this particular section for the 2012 Tour de France and that road takes you all the way to the summit at the top of the crater of the volcano. Mount Tidy has come to the forefront in recent years as one of the most famous climbs in cycling, despite never featuring in a Grand Tour to date. This is partly due to the pilgrimage made by pro teams in the off-season for altitude training and the build-up to major races. Thanks to the wide range of training conditions available from sea level all the way up to 2,000 metres in elevation. The sheer length of the climb makes it one of the longest continuous climbs in Europe, and despite its name, Mount Tidy is actually an active volcano. The route we're riding is one of the most popular and picturesque ascents starting in Los Cristianos. It can be quite busy as you negotiate a few tricky roundabouts to get out of town. But once clear of the traffic and underneath the TF1 motorway where the main Strava segment starts, you start the climb in earnest on a wide carriageway of around 6% in gradient towards La Camela. So Paul, we're about 6k into the climb now. How are you feeling? It's not easy at all. Um, winter training has uh, not paid off. Had a good Christmas though. But yeah, a very, very good Christmas and a very, very good New Year. So <laughs> that may be the reason why it's very hard and not just okay at the moment. But we'll plow on. So this section we're on now. It's quite a nice section of the climb where you first start to get out of the houses and it's a nice hairpin section of road. Less traffic as well. Yeah. You say like there's a car right behind you. Lesser <laughs> traffic than at the bottom, back in Los Cristianos. Once you reach La Camela and turn onto the TF28, despite being relatively early on in the climb, the gradient doesn't drop below 7% as you steadily ascend towards Arona. slopes of Mount Tady now and the roads are quite busy but we're heading into the quieter roads as you get higher up. It's currently January and it's still boiling. <laughs> it's about 22 degrees right now so perfect if you want to come away in the winter and escape the horrible inclement British weather. The climate in Tenerife makes it perfect for a winter training camp destination with the south side of the island in the rain shadow of Mount Tady, resulting in far more reliable and pleasant weather compared to other European destinations. We've been going not that long. We're still in the first <laughs> the third of the climb and I've already run out of gears. <laughs> so <laughs> that's gonna be an issue, it's gonna be an issue. Yeah, the 39.28 was probably not the best choice. Just because it's so long, I think. Yeah. It's all about pacing. Is that what you're doing? Trying to. <laughs> Trying to. The next section of the climb gives you the opportunity to glance back down the mountain towards the coast, with a hairpin section that you wouldn't be unaccustomed to seeing in the Alps. It's a similar sort of gradient to Sacalobra. All right, sort of seven percent this bit. Yeah. All the way. How long Sacalobra? Ten k. Wow. <laughs> well, nine point six k. Just gone through the hairpin section, which was a bit more shallower grading than the at the base of the climb. The climb starts to change now and get a bit more alpine. But this, the gradient's pretty constant. Right now we're on a nice five percent bit, which feels pretty flat. But occasionally you get ramps of sort of nine percent as well. The importance of pacing is absolutely crucial on Tady. 
as when you reach Escalona at the top of the switchbacks, you will have already been climbing for 14 kilometers and have already ascended 900 meters. Normally this would signal the summit on the majority of mountains around Europe, but on Tidy you still haven't reached the halfway point in terms of elevation or distance. Don't edit this out, but Paul got overtaken by a mountain biker. <laughs> Should have seen him. But he was a national champion of cross country mountain biking. National champion of everything. <laughs> <laughs> about the halfway point in elevation of the climb. Oh, it always goes onto video when I do that and I don't know why. Now it's on panorama. From tackling constant switchbacks, you are then subjected to a section of long dragging straights. One of the main characteristics of Tady, whether it be views, vegetation or the road surface itself, is the ever-changing landscape. So these posts just behind us are actually where Bradley Wiggins would begin his efforts uh, when he was training prior to the 2012 Tour de France. So yeah, what are we up now? About 1,400 metres up? Yep. So yeah, I mean, altitude has been a factor so far. From this point on, we'll really start to kick in. But yeah, Bradley Wiggins specifically chose this part of the climb higher up because he wanted his efforts to be at altitude because that was an area of his racing where he felt he had a weakness prior to the Tour de France uh, in previous years. On your arrival into Villa Flor, which is a notable landmark of 1500 metres elevation, it is important to remember that this is the last place to fill up any water bottles or stock up on any supplies you may need before the last push to the top. From here, you turn onto the TF21, which brings another rising gradient in the road as you weave your way through vast rockery and lumen trees. A number of open corners will treat you not only to a stunning view of the climb, but also allow you to see as far as Gran Canaria and the other Canary Islands on a clear day. We're at 2,100 metres now, nearly at the top, but we're still climbing. Not there yet. How are you feeling? A lot better than the start, because I know there's not long to go. It's one of the hardest things about this climb is the psychological it's long. Just long, side it? of it. So long. <laughs> it literally goes on forever. Yeah. No, it doesn't, that's a lie. <laughs> Sound more like Carlton Kirby yeah. at every passing moment. <laughs> the climbing eventually stops as you reach the Mount Tady World Heritage Sign, which at 2,200 metres is the highest point on the climb. It's also the perfect place to pause for a picture before layering up for the descent into the crater towards the Hotel Parador. After a descent of around four kilometers, you drop back down to 2,000 meters elevation at the crater floor, giving your legs a reprieve as you are able to shift up to the big ring for the first time in hours. This is pretty crazy now, but we're actually riding inside a volcano. <laughs> it may look like we're somewhere in the middle of the Arizona desert in America, but we're still in Tenerife and there's still some more climb to go as well. So we've uh, started climbing again up to uh, <laughs> no one hotel, told me about this. hotel Parador and uh, we've got a nice headwind to greet us as well. Yep, so we're heading up to the hotel where Team Sky and a lot of the other pros stay and uh, it's just out of the crater and uh, overall I think I was thinking about the kind of gearing you'd use for this climb and I think you could if you're a fit cyclist get away with a standard gearing to be honest um, not even a compact chain set because although it is long yeah like we say it's never very steep so yeah it's all right cool fact coming up Planet of the Apes was filmed over there. That's pretty cool. Best isn't part it? of the climb. Best part <laughs> of the climb, surely. Yeah. Don't get that out to us. You look a bit like a chimp if you're well, being right now, Paul. You know. The constantly changing landscape shifts once again before the final grind towards the hotel that is a home to a number of professional riders and athletes over the season. So we're just actually at the Hotel Parador 
which is where Bradley Wiggins, Team Sky and loads of other pros stay when they're doing altitude training up here. And there it is. It's not much to look at, but it's got a good location, so that's why they come here.